In all my years playing MMORPGs, there has been one role that I have gravitated towards time and time again, and it's that of the tank. Being the line in the sand, keeping my friends alive while we challenge tough enemies and even tougher dungeons. I am the protector of the party, the shield of protection, the defender of the weak, and it's with that in mind that I present to you my ultimate tank guide. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name's Brian if you're new around here and if you're a returning subscriber for watching this video, you've unlocked the title, The Shield. That's what you get for subscribing, by the way. Free titles to rep in-game and in the real world. So feel free, if this video does earn your sub, let me know in the comments so I can welcome you to the channel and hopefully you enjoy your new title. In today's video, I'm going to show you my weapons, perks, attributes, and gear and give you a blueprint for the ultimate tank. Feel free to make any changes to anything that you see here in today's video and sound off in the comments with your questions and or changes that you've made so we can continue this conversation around tanking in New World. Being that this is a living game, be sure to check the top link in the description for the New World playlist so that way you can always get caught up on all the most recent news and information around the game. But now it's time to go ahead and go through my build for the ultimate New World tank. So the overall flow of this video is we're going to go through my weapon skills, then we're going to talk about my gear, and then we're going to talk about my attributes. Hopefully this helps answer all your questions, but like I said, if it doesn't, sound off in the comments below. I am rocking pretty much the defender tree here for the ultimate tank build. Picking first the shield rush. This is going to give me that five meter knockback of foes dealing 125% weapon damage. And I've enhanced it twice with improved rush. This is going to give me that additional 10% weaken on the enemies for four seconds. Weaken is reducing their damage uh, that they are able to output. And then finally intimidating rush. It's also going to add a slow effect of 30% to the enemies as well. So basically an awesome ability. Now I do only take one perk from Shield Bash's line. Shield Bash is gonna deal 50% weapon damage and stuns foes for two seconds. And then this is also Taunt Gym compatible. We'll talk about our Taunt Gyms in our gear section here in a second. And then you have Intimidating Bash. Shield Bash causes greatly increased threat and 100% more damage to the buff there. In the uh, Defiant Stance category, I've got uh, basically for Defiant Stance, it's for eight seconds, you reduce the incoming base damage from attackers by 30%. And this is also Taunt Gym compatible, uh, thus increasing my threat bonuses. I've upgraded it with the, if my health is above 50%, damage reduction is increased by 20%. And finally, Restoration, gain 15% of my max health when Defiant Stance ends as a nice little self-cure. I am taking the ultimate defensive formation while blocking reducing damage uh, to all allies within two meters by 30%. So it's a nice little group-wide uh, buff. And then from the perks, I take Sturdy Shield. This is going to grant me an additional 15% physical armor. Elemental Resistance, reduce damage of all magic types by 10%. And then one with the shield. When you block with the shield and all shield skills, you're going to recharge uh, 1%. Then I also have Sturdy Grip. Stamina damage is reduced by 15% when blocking with a melee attack in a shield. I also take defi defensive training. When you block, you gain an additional 10% fortify for five seconds. And then I also finally have High Grip. Stamina damage is reduced by 15% when blocking a ranged attack with a shield. Now from the Swordmaster category, I take Empowered Stab. This is going to be a successful heavy attack grants me a 30% empower for five seconds, increasing my damage. Then I also take Freeing Justice, successfully hitting it with a heavy attack will cause you to lose one debuff. Then I also take Counter Attack. When you block an attack, you gain uh, a stack of Empower, granting a 3% damage increase for five seconds, and this can actually stack up to five times. And then finally, Mobility, move 33% faster when blocking. Then in the Hatchet category, I am taking a Split Tree decision here, and there's a lot of options. I honestly think when it comes to the Hatchet, you're... You might have a completely different setup, but I wanted to give you this as an option to play around with. So first things first, I take Berserk. Triggers a Berserk mode that increases all attack damage by 20% of the active in Berserk mode. The It's going to be active for 12 seconds, and the cooldown will be triggered once Berserk ends. This is also Taunt Shim compatible, continuing to help bring uh, and build up hate. I have On the Hunt, increased movement speed by 20% while in Berserk mode. I also have Berserking Refresh. When Berserk is active, gain a portion of your health back every four seconds for a max of 30% max HP. You can see Berserking Purge. Triggering Berserk removes all crowd control effects, stuns, slows, roots uh, from the player. And then finally, Uninterruptible Berserk. While in Berserk, your attacks are uninterruptible, 
during Berserk, you cannot be staggered. So that is the, the full tree here. Let's talk about the other skills here. Rending throw, throw an axe dealing 110% weapon damage and applying rend, uh, reducing the target's damage absorption by 10% for 10 seconds. It's enhanced with targeting impact. Rend increases uh, increased to 15% if further than eight meters from the target. Opportunistic rending throw deals an additional 20% damage that the target is already have an active debuff. And second wind, using rending throw on the target with an active debuff reduces the ability cooldown by 20%. Then I've got infected throw. Uh, throw an axe dealing 150% weapon damage and triggers disease and weakens the target for five seconds. Disease reduces target's healing efficiency by 30%. Then I've got an enhanced with mortal power, increased duration of disease to weaken uh, eight seconds of the targets below 30% health. And finally, aerial transmission uh, creates a three meter disease AOE on impact that, uh, that lingers in place for three seconds. Moving into our gear, we've got the Helm of the Soldier. That's got this look if you are curious about what I'm using. I've got a 20 point buff to strength uh, listed here and i got a couple of different perks in this case arcane ward and blight resistance um and then i move into more of the breastplate of the soldier really giving me this heavy armor so you can see my armor rating for physical and uh, elemental is really really high uh, and it got a lot of strength uh, inserted in this and a little bit of dexterity which is going to play real well with the sword and shield but we're going to be talking more about constitution here as the tank here in a second uh the vambrance of the fighter then i've got greaves of the knight padded uh soldier boots of the zealot and the shield of the knight so you can see here everything is pretty much heavy i'm i'm currently at a heavy build for my gear for my stats down here i was really trying to look at constitution or strength so i have amulet of the century ring of the century and earring of the century giving me as much constitution as absolutely possible uh, it looks like from the the perks rendering you gain 0.45% health every second. Uh, refreshing Ward reduces active cooldowns by 1.7 after being hit five times. And then I also have Refreshing Ward reduces active cooldowns by 1.7 after being hit for five times. So it's going to help reduce my cooldowns, keeping them up, especially as a tank, that's going to be hugely important. My sword, you can see here, I'm also rocking a Carnelian Gym. Carnelian is going to help me generate 300% more threat. This just feeds into everything that I'm doing. So anytime I have a chance to shot, slot, shot, slot a uh, Carnelian gem, that's going to be a huge help. And then my uh, my hatchet here doesn't have a uh, gem slot, but you can see here rocking dexterity and constitution uh, with some really good stats uh, pretty much to start. As you dive in more into the level 60 stuff, note that you're going to have way more options open up to you. Okay, we talked about the gear. We talked about the skills. Let's talk about our attributes. Right now, I'm rocking as much constitution. I could probably take some strength, uh, you know, some things off strength and put it into constitution. And really, the choice is going to be up to yours. At 308, I've got just right under 1400 uh, constitution, but I still want to be able to bring some damage uh, to the group as well. I could also pull a little bit of this back and just because I'm not necessarily here to one of these tiers. One of the things that you will see that as you hit these different tiers, it actually impacts your various like different crafting and gathering and gathering being a huge aspect of the game uh, i am at least getting additional uh, you know points here so either i would need to kind of figure out and adjust something down here and increase it so i could get up to 150 to take full advantage of this tier or would want to try to maybe put it into some dexterity to kind of have that secondary impact for both the hatchet and the sword if you guys aren't aware uh if you have a weapon like the great axe that's 100 percent strength it's a one-to-one. -one. one point equals one point of value. But if it's something like the sword, where it's also in two categories, one point is like 0.9x of value, and then it's 0.65 uh, value of the second stat. So it's somewhat divided across two stats is how they have that break uh, breakdown, etc. But you can see here, rocking a lot of uh, a lot of health, very tanky overall. I've tested this against a lot of different enemies. And have had a really good solid experience but it really is about group play and hopefully this is something to kind of help give you an idea of what you should be striving for what you should be hunting for in your ultimate tank build yourself guys thanks so much for watching for listening for being here if you feel like i earn it hit that subscribe button that like button and share this video out in fact if you find anything interesting in this video you can always clip it as i think youtube really enjoys that aspect of uh, their new features that they brought here to the channel that's it for me guys 
For Ginger Prime, my name is Brian. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being awesome. Hopefully you enjoy your new title. Hopefully I'll see you in my next video. But until then, take care. A little off topic, but I just want to say thank you for providing me a friendly, fun, and optimistic community. Baby. Coming from an MMO community filled with toxicity, this is an amazing breath of fresh air. <laughs> Keep it up, baby. Oh, yeah.